Hey everybody, in this video we're going to learn how to calculate the amount of heat that's either absorbed by a system or released by a system. So in this image here we have this metal loop that is so hot and has absorbed so much heat that it's actually glowing. And if we know a couple of other things about that metal, we can actually calculate how many joules of heat must have gone into that metal to get it so hot. So to uh, show you guys how to calculate heat, imagine that we have this scenario here, where we have an Erlenmeyer flask containing this green liquid, and the flask is sitting on top of a hot plate, and notice that the hot plate is turned all the way up. So it's all the way to the nine. So as this hot plate gets really, really, really hot, this white surface is gonna heat up, and that's going to act as a source of heat. So heat is going to flow into this green liquid and if we have, let's say we have a thermometer inserted into this liquid so that we can read the temperature, let's say that before we turn the hot plate on the thermometer reading was right here. Well once this system starts absorbing more and more heat it's going to get hotter and its temperature is going to rise. It's going to climb up it's going to increase in temperature. So notice that the more heat that's absorbed, the larger the change in temperature. And that sounds a lot to me like a proportionality. As one goes up, the other goes up. And so we arrive at this proportionality here where we have the amount of heat absorbed is proportional to, directly proportional, to the change in temperature that we call delta T. And we can turn this proportionality into an equation by in incorporating a proportionality constant that we call C. Now that proportionality constant C is called the heat capacity of the liquid. And the heat capacity is basically like just saying, well, how much heat does this stuff have to absorb to get hot? If something has a high heat capacity, it can take in a lot of heat without undergoing a very large change in temperature. And if something has a very low heat capacity, it could take in a small amount of heat and have a very large increase in temperature. So the heat capacity of a substance is basically just the amount of heat that's required to raise the temperature of that substance by one degree Celsius. And again, we get this equation right here where we have the amount of heat absorbed equals the product of the heat capacity and the change in temperature. Now this equation is somewhat useful, but it's not very useful. And the reason why it's not so useful is because heat capacity is an extensive property. And that means that it depends on the amount of matter. So in other words, one gram of water is gonna have a much smaller heat capacity than uh, 10,000 grams of water because there's simply more water and it's gonna absorb more heat without undergoing a very big change in temperature. Now, if we wanted to use a type of heat capacity that was an intensive property, in other words, it doesn't depend on how much matter you have, then we would have to use another type of heat capacity that we call the specific heat capacity, uh, which is denoted by C subscript S, and oftentimes it's called just specific heat for short. And the specific heat of a substance is defined as the amount of heat that's required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. And so if we uh, use an equation that incorporates specific heat, then we're gonna get this equation down here, where we have the amount of heat absorbed is gonna be the product of three terms, the mass M, the specific heat, C sub S, and then the change in temperature, delta T. So Q equals M C S delta T. And so uh, before we end the video, let's just do one example where we use this equation. So this problem says to calculate the amount of heat that's absorbed by a 54.2 gram sample of liquid water, and it increases its temperature from 2.0 degrees Celsius to 60.0 degrees Celsius. And it also says that the specific heat of liquid water is 4.18 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. So again, we're gonna use that formula, Q equals MC delta T, and we're simply gonna plug in all of our values. We have the mass, we have the specific heat, and delta T is easy to figure out because it's simply gonna be final temperature minus initial temperature. So the mass, that's 54.2 grams. The specific heat, 4.18 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. 
And then delta T is going to be, like I said earlier, final minus initial, 60.0 degrees Celsius minus 2.0 degrees Celsius. So notice that grams are going to cancel. Also, degrees Celsius are going to cancel. The only unit that we're going to be left with is the joule, which makes sense because we're figuring out heat after all. And heat is the flow of thermal energy. So it makes sense that the unit for Q that we end up with is going to be the joule. And all we have to do is just punch our numbers into a calculator, and we're going to take it to three significant figures, and it's going to end up being 13,100 joules. So that's a lot of joules. So what this means is water-has a very high specific heat capacity. 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius is an unusually high heat capacity. And this explains why areas that are uh, near the beach, so in things, coastlines, uh, are, tend to be very cool because that water that's so close by is absorbing all the heat, keeping the surrounding land nice and cool. Um, just an interesting fact for you, there are only two states in the United States that have never recorded temperatures above 100 degrees Celsius. One of them is really obvious. It's Alaska, again, because it's so close to the North Pole, it's always cold. It never gets above 100 degrees Celsius there. The other one isn't so obvious. It is Hawaii. Hawaii has never recorded a temperature above 100 degrees Celsius. And the reason why is because those islands are surrounded by water, and that water is absorbing all the heat, keeping Hawaii nice and cool. All right, so that does it for this video. I hope you found it useful and I will see you next time. Have a good one.